do a serious one. Yeah, yeah. So joining you live from the World Championship 2023 in Barcelona, the Living Legend Podcast. This episode of the Living Legends Podcast is brought to you by the Banish Zone in Wernersville, Pennsylvania. More than just a hobby store, but a hub for community building and fostering the love of gaming in all of its forms. Whether you're an avid card gamer, a strategic board game aficionado, or a lover of miniature gaming, they have something for everyone. And their carefully curated collection boasts a wide range of games, ensuring that you'll find the perfect fit for your gaming preferences. They only opened their store in June 2023, but already have been fostering a fantastic community. Make sure you visit their store, thebanishzone.com, and use the affiliate code LIVING10LEGENDS for 10% off one order per customer. Make sure you make the most out of it, and stay banished. <laughs> Oh, that American accent is killing me. Anyway, let's get back to the pod. Or secret yeah. arts. Oh, yeah, some of them are That's very the good. Well, all of yeah. them are very good, but one of them stands out in particular. But anyway, we're going to get to that very shortly. But are we recording? Are we good to go? Yeah, yeah, we should be good. Fantastic. Hell yeah. Talking. Hell yeah. So uh, welcome back to the Living Legends podcast. I'm not sure what episode this is, but regardless, Na- Kel is back this week. 94. It, it is episode 94. 94. 94 yeah. Wow! Dang. So we're nearly at hundred, nearly. Uh, and we saw we saw a few of you, few of your comments. A few, I think, a few of you a couple of a couple of episodes ago said you should do this or you should do that for the the, the you know the one hundred episodes. So stay tuned. We might do something different for that. Um, mm-hmm. But here we are, episode ninety four, and Kel is back in the room, despite being a little bit hoarse, but uh, getting better. Welcome back, Kel. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just like a little pony, you know. <laughs> yeah, just just. A little horse. <laughs> yeah, it was a little, a little, just a little, little tiny horse. You know, <laughs> clip clop, my dudes. Anyway, uh, how's it going? Uh, I do, I do have a slight cough, so I apologize if I'm unable to hide a cough here or there. But uh, uh, I'm back, yeah. and I'm excited to talk about some part of the Missville stuff. We have um, mm-hmm. six part of the Missville cards to talk about, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be cool. Oh yeah, and then there's like Good some stuff, ko yeah. ko deck stuff and yeah there's yeah. just some ko things it's fine just some ko things just some unique cards printed in a start set which is apparently limited but anyway we'll get to that uh when we <laughs> when we get there uh but yeah welcome back kel and uh if i didn't mention i'm the host for today my name's az from go again gaming and joined as always by kel who's already introduced himself uh luckily and we've got bill as well hello i am bill uh from the spike feeders i was here last <laughs> week and kel wasn't it's it was a crazy uh reversal of fortunes but yeah. <laughs> uh yeah we're all here again we have some pretty decent stuff to talk about as well um mm-hmm. i am getting more and more intrigued about the uh the mystic illusionist stuff uh and we have yet another thing to um to speculate on uh because we had um we we were speculating on what she is and now we have to speculate right. on what uh, what exactly transcending is and how you do it so uh, well, so we have a decent amount to talk about. We have some cards that let you transcend, actually. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, and obviously <laughs> we're going to try and we're going to try and keep the episode fairly trim uh, and on the rails this week. Um, so uh, if we could just maybe just go round to the Arsenal step first, Bill. What are you doing tonight? As to why we're going to try uh, and railroad this episode. <laughs> yeah. So the reason that uh, we're actually filming this a little bit earlier than we usually would, and yeah. uh, I've requested that we keep it to a tight hour and a half. I think that should mm-hmm. be that should be good enough to do. But yeah. uh, I'm going to a concert tonight. I'm going to see Alestorm. Uh, <laughs> for anyone who is who is aware, they are a Scottish band who does, I believe, the direct quote is pirate metal. Um, right. So yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a song about uh, drinking all your beer. Um, there's another one, the number two on Spotify, which I don't think I can say on this podcast, but, uh, (laughs) I think they're going to be a ton of fun. This is the first time I've seen them in, in concert. Um, but, uh, I think it will be, I think it'll be a good time. (laughs) Yeah. That's in like a few hours. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. They sound, they sound like, uh, it sounds like Smashback Alehorn could be like one of their song names. Oh yeah. Uh, (laughs) yeah. I think that would would fit in almost perfectly. (laughs) Absolutely. Actually kind of reminds me of a. 
band called Queller Talk. I don't know if anyone knows what the hell I'm talking about, but there's like a Viking-ish metal band called Queller Talk, and they have a song called Blood Torst. It's all in. Um, I'm not sure what language it's all in, but um, yeah, there's quite a few of those. Quite a few of those bands that um, mm-hmm. the sort of pull upon sort of Viking or pirate or that sort of style music um and act as well like a performance like dressing up mm-hmm. as the, the thing and yeah it's always it's always good i've never seen l storm myself but um yeah there's loads of bands out there that do that sort of stuff but yeah if i survive i'll let you know how it went <laughs> yeah exactly um but um going back round to uh to flesh and blood obviously we can uh we can just go, go into um our weeks probably not going to be as much because uh, obviously kel wasn't here um uh, mine have, mine have just been the same sort of thing going forward the the league that means nothing still carrying on um i've got uh, tommy fresh and mo bogsley back to do uh, week four commentary um so they did they opened it up on week one so they're going to be doing another load of rounds for me um so glad to get those guys back on because they were very very enthusiastic and they, they they loved it last time so i'm still carrying on but bill have you had anything recently apart from just getting hyped for this this sort of stuff which we're going to go into in a minute uh no not personally um i have been doing a decent amount of uh just like personal sort of theory crafting or just trying to uh make some amount of predictions about what the uh what the set's going to look like but um in terms of actually playing i i have not gotten a chance to in a little bit unfortunately (laughs) yeah it makes sense yeah definitely um so yeah i mean uh, going straight into this obviously the mothership uh released a video recently which was like hyping up the calling and the world premiere event in tokyo and that was only yesterday or was it today i think it was today actually seven hours ago uh yeah so it's yeah. definitely today um but um seems like yeah it seems like yesterday because there's been so much chat on it already um but basically if you go to the calling and you buy a premiere package you get three I think you get three cards plus the um the commemorative card as well um, so the comm- the commemorative card is uh, the new illusionist, but has Japanese writing all over it, and, and it's mm-hmm. got a special piece of art as well. So um, <clears throat> maybe you'll even see it in the thumbnail. I don't know, but <laughs> but, yeah. um, but it is a lovely piece of art. I'm sure I'm assuming you guys have already seen this. So the yeah, the, the way you fantastic. get them is there's the three cards, and you get those as part of your like fabled package or or what have you. Um, the alternate art, um, I forget her name, but the alternate art illusionist, uh, that is a world premiere exclusive. So everyone attending the world premiere event will get that one. Um, so they're kind of separate, but they're, I mean, if you just do all the things, you're going to get them all anyway. Um, and, uh, since I wasn't here last week, I will be saying, I will say I I will be going to this, uh, event. I didn't think I would Mm -hmm. be able to go, Mm -hmm. but um circumstances have actually placed me in japan at that time um regardless of this event and so i was like i'm gonna be in japan anyway so um yeah i'm actually gonna be able to attend uh, the world premiere event i'm actually really looking forward to it and every every new little piece they show i'm like super stoked it also means that i'm likely very very much likely not gonna be able to go to worlds in osaka because i severely doubt that i'm gonna get to japan three times this year but um but yeah, at yeah. least I'll be able to go to this one. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I've, I've been keenly paying attention. Oh, also, there's a alternate art Oasis Respite that everyone gets for just kind of like participating in whatever events for the weekend, too. I imagine they'll, I imagine they'll be similar to the um, to the Ravis Rabble sort of stuff, right? And this Sagrada Familia, they'll put on events to get the Oasis Respite special ones, I imagine, yeah. something along those lines. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh so, yeah make sure make sure you make sure you get all of those as well then it's a good that, one because like, yeah that, that, they, they look awesome um but yeah so you'll so you'll be getting this this com- you'll, will you be getting all of the things do you think yeah so i uh, my my plans um i'm definitely gonna be playing in the world premiere event that's kind of like the big thing for me uh, i think yeah. the calling is also limited um or at least it has some some limited component as well so um i'm, I'm gonna be participating in the calling Mostly because yeah. if you if you participate in the calling, I think you get a new like the the assassin, the new assassin. Um, oh. I don't know if she's like rainbow foil or cold foil, but if everyone participating gets a like a promo version of her. Um, and so I'm just going to do that to get the promo version of her. And I don't know. We'll see how I do. But 
Yeah. So I, I plan on like getting getting all the things. Um, mm-hmm. Too right. Yeah. 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 And uh, what, what what do you think, Bill? Is this everything you wanted to see from a Japanese flesh and blood car, just like the templating and everything? Is it how what you expect it to be? Yeah, just about. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we did see the. Uh, I'm just trying to pull up the template itself yeah i mean it looks absolutely phenomenal um Mm. we did see i think a basically a preview of what the japanese cards were going to look like with um i think it was a teclavasan that um oh maybe yeah it was yeah it was like just as like a hey like trying to drum up some support and some uh some excitement here like this is what a japanese card will look like i'm pretty sure there was a japanese teclavasan uh image floating around somewhere oh Um, like a like a fan-made sort of community-based one i don't think it was fan-made i think it was oh i think it was like revealed somewhere i i'm gonna have to see if i can if i can find it again or maybe i'm just completely out to lunch but uh (laughs) i seem to remember there being like uh basically a mock-up that was i'm pretty sure posted by lss of a japanese teclavasan oh, right, um, okay. i'll, I'll, I'll mm. see if i can find it <laughs> yeah see if you can find it come back to it but um but yeah you're loving the look of it nonetheless, nonetheless yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah for so. the visual people i'm actually kind of uh in the moment trying to pull up all these as images here not the tackle of Austin, but uh, of all the other stuff we're going to be talking about. So at least we'll have some visual representation here. So let me. Okay, so you're editing the OBS as we go, basically. Yep. A bit of deep lore. Lovely. Yep, yep. Uh, gonna... yeah, so, ho- so hopefully, uh, so hopefully, Cal's flashing those images up, so we can, so you can all see the uh, the images. But um, for the audio, the audio listeners, definitely go and check these out if you haven't done so already. They're all over the internet. You'll be able to see them now. Um, I think they're all on. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe aside from the one we're speaking about about now, all the cards that we are going to be speaking about are already on Fabrary, which is the card library that I personally use. Um, so yeah, you can go and check out all the cards we're going to speak about today. And then that other one is uh, are the LSS video, which you might have seen on the socials, will be on there. So go and have a look at it. Um, all right. So yeah, that's, that's cool that you're going to be there and you can be able to get those things. Get those things for sure. Yeah, I'm. Very much looking forward to it. So I, I pulled up the image of the alternate art um, illusionist. Yeah. She looks like, amazing. I, I tweeted about it like this morning, and it's mm. gotten a lot of a lot of traction. Um, yeah, mostly because I was a little. Uh, uh, first of all, this is like probably one of, if not my favorite, flesh and blood card now. And until they make like a alternate art anime style new, uh, this is mm-hmm. like probably going to be one of my favorite cards. It is absolutely gorgeous. This is up there with like. One of my favorite magic cards, by the way, this is a, it's irrelevant, is the, the Yoshitaka Amano um, Liliana Dreadhorde General. Um, yep. And Amano is the, one of the original artists for Final Fantasy. And so that's one of my favorite magic cards of all time. Um, and one, one of my favorite cards that I just own. And so like this is going to be one of my favorite flesh and blood cards. Um, and I I posted that I thought that um, the, the fact that I've got, I've had people like, unsub from my channel because of the quote anime games and then flesh and blood immediately gets anime style art the irony of that is not lost on me so i just thought it was funny you know um yeah but uh yeah yeah that's good stuff yeah it's nice to see that uh they're sort of tying in they're still continuing this thing of um maybe on a higher level with the with the Japanese event, a commemorative card or some sort of unique card that you can only get if you do the events in Barcelona or Tokyo, mm. etc. There's these things that they're they're continuing to do where you can get special cards at special events, but now even more so on a more you know higher national level, they're saying you know you can get this anime style quote unquote anime style card because of the fact it's in Japan. Maybe if we go somewhere else like America, you'll be able to get like a cheeseburger on a card or something, <laughs> you know. Yep. <laughs> or oh, the there UK, was uh... get a Greg's it... or like a Sainsbury's on a card or something, you know. Or it's just like Stonehenge. The it's card. just the em- embodiment of freedom on a card. That's right. It's just an eagle. Yeah. <laughs> every time you get, like every time you get it, it goes. Scraw! Yeah. Scraw! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's oh got machine God. guns, yeah. He's got machine guns. There is a funny meme on on this. I think it's on Discord where it's like America, like guns and like an eagle, like guns and stuff. Brilliant. If you know the meme, let us know. But it's, um, there's uh, my favorite one so far is um, not quite these words. Uh, something a little bit a little bit spicier than the average uh, Living Legends podcast. But uh, it's a skeleton holding two AK-47s with the American flag in the background, and it yeah. says, "What the heck is a kilometer?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that one personally. Uh, what, brilliant. Yeah, you, you got to say it with like some sort of some sort of accent too. You were like, "What the heck is a kilometer?" It's a kilometer, <laughs> man. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> what's a kilometer? Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, but yeah, so uh, so obviously with that announcement as well uh, came the fantastic art comm- commemorative card that you're going to be able to get. It's the world's first commemorative card as such. Uh, they have done other things, as we mentioned, but this is a first commemorative card, I believe. I've, I've seen people selling these already for like hundreds of dollars. Uh, this yeah. is going to be it's going to be quite rare. I imagine the uh, the event in Japan is going to be smaller than uh, some of the other ones, just because it's like so oh, expensive yeah. to to get to Japan. So these cards are going to be pretty, ex- yeah. like pretty sought after and pretty like hard to get. I think. Um, I think so. yeah. in the video, in the video, does it? Does it say? It doesn't say they're cold foil, but I do reckon that are they cold cold foil cards? Do you think as well? Ooh, I have no idea. That'd be cool. Doesn't I mean, say, does it? I'm I'm doesn't pretty like stoked it. either way. To, to be honest, um, yeah, just having Japanese cards, <laughs> like having like all the alt art anime style card is just like so cool. Um, I saw there's a I saw there was a play mat as well. I think Erica. Um, yeah, there, there, posted, there's a there's a play mat too. Yeah, there, there's a play mat. I shared it in the in my uh, in the Rogues Gallery Discord um uh, okay yeah yep it looks like you get nice. a different that, then so you, you get the play mat as part of the um it's different it's, it's weird they're doing it kind of weird so um you get the card for <clears throat> for doing the world premiere event you also get a different play mat for doing the world premiere event not the art from the card you get something else it, it's like it hasn't been revealed sure. yet if you go to the web page to like sign up for all, all these events it, it still has it blank and it says it's something else and then for right. the um, package, like the fabled package or whatever, that's where you get the playmat of the Japanese uh, the anime style art. Um, well, so. either way, whoever's going to that is going to be able to either have some really, really cool stuff or become rich as a result of selling it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm keeping it. Um, it looks so good. Yeah. yeah. EV on this event is mental. I mean, you probably could... You probably could pay for your for your flights over there by literally selling your own swag. I've seen people sell yeah. the swag for six hundred dollars, and they sold out immediately on like the the, the Facebook yeah. page. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is the event sold out yeah. yet? Do you know, I'm not sure. Oh no, I, I doubt it. I, I still need to I still need to to actually buy my tickets and stuff. But I have a feeling it, I have a feeling it will not sell out. Yeah. 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 But um. But yeah, as part of this reveal, there's a few other cards as well. But Kel, you obviously weren't here last week when me and Bill were talking about the heroes. What's your thoughts on the new heroes? Because obviously we haven't had your your opinions on it. Yet. Oh yeah, if you want like my really <laughs> long opinion, I, I did a I did a video on it. But um, dude, I love this set. This is amazing. Uh, it's like basically Outsiders two for me. Um, I love this yeah. set so much. It's been a little while since I've done this, but I, I messaged Robbie Wen on Facebook and I was like, dude, Robbie, the set looks amazing you you guys did a, a a killer job and uh we had a nice little back and forth uh, robbie by the way is the creative director for flush of blood if you don't know uh he's a really really nice person and um yeah uh, it sounds like they're really nice. proud of what they've done with this set and uh they should be it looks uh, it looks amazing and it's like as far as like flesh and blood sets go this is like the most me set so it's like I'm very, yeah. very, very into this. Um, yeah, I'm good. I even, I even really love like Illusionist is a class that I like. Ninja was the very first class that I played in Flesh and Blood, and then obviously Assassin is my favorite. Unfortunately, no Ranger in this one, but um, I mean, it can't be literally yeah. perfect. So no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, maybe one day, but 
yeah so uh cool stuff but um if you want to go into the to, to the cards that were spoiled alongside the um the tokyo premiere <laughs> thing which is what you're going to get as part of the uh the event um and uh the first one i'll throw it over to uh, i'll throw it over to bill have you got the cards up there I do. Uh, so the first one that we have, let's just go. Do we want to talk about the uh, the chakras, or do we want to talk about the the bigger cards? We'll, we'll take we we'll, we'll, the bigger we'll, cards. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. well, maybe. Well, maybe the the bigger cards might give more context to the chakras, perhaps. That's true. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's do. I want to talk about uh, sacred art, jade tiger domain. Uh, that's the one that I'm choosing to talk of about. Because, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a mystic ninja instant that is legendary. Uh, so you can only have one in your mystic ninja deck. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a blue pitch that costs three. Uh, and if you've played another blue card this turn, you get to choose the following three modes. Otherwise, you only get to choose one. Uh, so it, if you've played a blue card, you get to do all three of these things, which is create two crouching tigers in your hand, give your crouching tigers plus one attack this turn, and then also transcend mm -hmm. um we don't know what that means yet uh but we do as we'll sort of see in a little bit uh have cards that care about if you've transcended this turn uh so yeah. this allows you to have that, that effect if there's something else that's t stapled to it cool but we don't know that yet <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah um, it it honestly transcend might just literally be that like it's just like a yeah, state whether like a marker Yep. Like a flag for your turn. <laughs> yep, it's either you've transcended or you've not transcended, and then if you transcended, you get the bonuses. It, it could mm -hmm. literally just be as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, so very interesting card here. It's a, a yet another Art of War for Tigers. Um, it's an instant. That also, yeah. that's an instant. Uh, it also makes two of them, which is a pretty yeah. decent rate, um, because I'm pretty sure Roar of the Tiger only makes one uh, and has the the effect. Um, but obviously it does both of those things regardless. Um, so yeah, as long as you've played another blue card this turn, you get an additional plus one on all of your tigers and uh, two more of them in your hand. So this lets you go off pretty decently, I think. <laughs> I think you're yeah, going to find one. it pretty easy to play like a blue in Ninja, right? Like you just play one of your oh yeah blue head jab or whatever the hell you're playing and go to town. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seems good. Yeah. So uh very very nice uh kickoff i think to just talking about these cards because uh mm -hmm. these have some pretty crazy effects and all of them are very similar in that they have three modes and you get yeah. to pick one of them or all all three depending on uh, if you've satisfied a requirement but uh but yeah also so, uh the mystic Jade's ninja Tiger border Tiger. looks rad as hell Oh god, gotcha. yeah. The mystic borders, all of them look crazy. So, okay, um, the assassin one, I have thoughts on the assassin one. <laughs> the assassin one kind of looks like <laughs> elemental rune blade to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it, to me, I immediately I see it and I immediately think of Tales of Aria. <laughs> right here, okay, let me talk about the assassin card next because I I want to talk about the border too, because go for it. All right, so so the card here, um, is hold on, let me get the right window up. Okay. So it's it's a sacred art undercurrent desires. Um the border looks so 90s L5R it hurts. It even has the same like jade coloring. So it's literally just like the assassin border, but instead of being like, you know, the gunmetal gray assassin border, it's got like this 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 jade coloring. And um mm. I'm I'm once I'm like fully not sick, I'm going to be making a video about like how L5R and uh, Fab share a lot of similarities, and this is like one that's pretty striking, actually. Like, it it looks insanely similar. Uh, just like the coloring, it just looks so much. But all right, let's talk about the card. Let's talk about the card. Other than the fact that New is like uh, taking off her clothes, walking into like this waterfall. That <laughs> yes, that is the art. Um, yeah. So not not so, so sacred fast. art, more like more like sacred ass. That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean that that is the only part of her that is covered. Um, uh, yes, it is tasteful. It's tasteful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. So not only are we getting anime style art, we're also getting uh, we're also getting lewd art in, in this set too. So. Uh, uh, brilliant. Anyway, so okay, this is another three drop uh, instant. It's a blue pitch card. It is also legendary in mechanics, so you can only have one of them in your deck. 
we are all unsure of the rarities like booster pack wise because these are promos so we don't actually know if they're mm -hmm. like majestics or actual legendary cards and it says if you've played another blue card this turn choose three otherwise choose one you can create a fang strike and a slither in your hand we have no idea what those are um banish up the two cards from an opposing hero's graveyard which obviously works really really well with new who can play mm -hmm. um like blue cards oh, yeah. yeah she can play blue cards from uh, their opponent's banner zone and then also transcend so it's really hard to evaluate this card because we have no idea what a fang strike or a slither is but um actually seems somewhat similar to the ninja card right it, it creates these like temporary cards i assume i assume they're kind of like mm -hmm. i assume they're going to be like uh the crouching tigers that have ephemeral these, these probably also have ephemeral right yeah um, probably, yeah and then uh being able to banish two cards in a, an opposing hero's graveyard is obviously really really good for new because mm. you get to play their stuff for free um best case scenario is like you just banish you're playing against guardian and you banish their two like big old chung chungus attacks and then you play them for free that's pretty cool um yeah you go like <laughs> tear asunder into uh like a what's the card i'm thinking of the uh, macho do... grande i was gonna say there's like the one <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. is it cranial crush you, that, that one's a oh, blue yeah, one cranial crush is a blue yep. yeah so yeah tear asunder into cranial crush for free yeah, pretty, pretty good, good. <laughs> yeah now i'm, now I'm gonna be like pretty happy playing against guardians i'm gonna be like ooh, you i get all your i get all your your good stuff or maybe maybe like wizards right they have a lot of blue stuff you just burn mm -hmm. them, burn them back. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Combo them out. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yep. Cards are really cool. And, um, yeah, that's, I, I don't know what the hell a Fang Strike or Slither is, but I'm curious for sure. Yeah. I, I think my, my, I think I saw somebody mention this, uh, in I think our, our local Winnipeg Discord, but, uh, and I, I tend to agree with them. I think they're both going to be ephemeral. One of them is going to be an attack and one of them is going to be an attack reaction. Um, just kind of based on how they're named. Uh, that's like my that's my guess. Fang, fang okay. Strike is yeah. definitely like an attack. Mm -hmm. Slither. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Or maybe it's maybe it's like a non-attack action that gives a buff to like a stealth card or something. Because Slither, I think, would make sense as like a, like a, you know, a nimbleism type effect, I think or uh, just the name itself yeah slither to me yes either that or maybe it gives stealth to something like maybe slither is like mm -hmm. give stealth to your next mystic assassin attack or whatever something you know something like that so you like it, it enables news ability yeah like i can see that too yeah yeah i'm just thinking because um the the old tigers when you created them in your hand it says if they were to be put into a grave from anywhere they cease to exist so you could if you if you i don't know it, there could be a special mechanic where these fang strikes and slithers you could keep them in your hand for the next turn potentially um because this, this is an this is an instant as well so you could keep it in yeah. your hand for the next turn they might even have defensive value or they might be <clears throat> other because obviously the crouching tigers don't don't block so maybe this is yeah. another way of creating block in your hand or something you know it could be could be you know sort of stuff like that also but yeah it, it seems like it's quite offensive but um, this this whole mechanic and design space of creating cards in your hand is pretty is pretty sick. Um, so uh, so yeah, I can't wait to see what this does. Yeah, um, this cycle of cards really feels like uh, hero mechanic enabling stuff, right? Yeah. They're like, here's the here's a way to enable like your tiger stuff, and this one very much yeah. seems like a way to enable news hero mechanics. So they seem very very Absolutely. tied into the characters even though they're not specializations they they feel like they are to be honest yeah so that was one thing i was going to touch on when i'm going to read out this next one which just sounds like a Yu-Gi-Oh card sacred art immortal lunar shrine it does <laughs> it does yeah it sounds like pure anime card um but why do you think they have not decided to use specializations because that they're all they've all got the the specific hero that it represents on the art as well right so why have they not hmm. just done legendary like they did with this my spoiler card legendary azalea specialization why have they not just done legendary new legendary zen mm -hmm. etc why do you think they have not done that i think the easy answer is because they want to keep it a little open mm. like uh perhaps they're like well we don't want to be make it so narrow as to make it a specialization but only like currently this hero can use it 
But if we want to print another, you know, mystic illusionist, they can also use it. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, like, we do have these, uh, and we'll talk about them later. We do have these uh, uh, these new armory decks, so it's not unheard of. I mean, it's not, like, unthinkable that they're, like, you know, have maybe different, you know, assassin illusionist and ninjas, you know, in the, in the pipeline that are going to be in the armory decks instead or you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just it's just strange to me because obviously it's it's narrow already. Like Mystic Illusionist, Mystic Assassin, Mystic Ninja, it's narrow already. Like I just don't understand why. Yeah, they're, tie- they're not tying it to a hero rather than just saying you can only have one. Well, and the uh, especially the effects of like um, like the Zen one specifically, it cares about crouching tigers and only crouching tigers. Uh, and you'd think yeah. that like the thing that makes new. Or the thing that makes Zen um, like different, uh, the the theme of the deck, I believe, is going to be crouching tigers. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be a tiger deck. So if they print another mystic illusion or another mystic ninja, then uh, it would they would just have another um, like they would, would be able to play to be that a... card, but it, it, they yeah. wouldn't necessarily want to play that card. It would be available to them, but it might not be relevant to the play style that the hero wants. So yeah, it is a little interesting that they've made like as as such narrow cards not specializations but maybe that's intended it makes sense (laughs) for me for like future proofing it's like you know maybe they're like you know hey maybe we should have just made eclipse just uh you know uh, just a regular legendary and then vincent Mm. could have used eclipse you know you know that kind of stuff um yeah maybe it's uh just kind of walking back maybe overly narrow design that they were kind of doing previously because like this next um, one, the Immortal one. Lunar Shrine, is like it just cares about like spectral shields. Like any mm-hmm. any illusionist could can make use of this one. So yeah, yeah. So so maybe they're for, for the odd occasion where one of these heroes might just living legend themselves within a few months, they can be like, oh, okay, the next we could just reprint it like Prism. We can just create new again as another mystic assassin but she's different in a certain way but she can still yeah. access the sacred um sacred card basically um so yeah i guess that's there's that argument as well but i guess it doesn't doesn't make a huge difference it not being a specialization but uh, this is the sacred art immortal lunar shrine and uh, what a piece of art as well from ina wong which i believe was the lady who did the uh the card art for your spoiler card right the shift the tide of battle yeah um, she same artist absolutely gorgeous artwork like just knocked oh, yeah. it out of the park again looks amazing yeah absolutely uh, and again this is a legendary card a mystic illusionist instant um so uh it says exactly the same stuff if you've played another blue card this turn choose three otherwise choose one so you get to create two spectral shield tokens which obviously cares about what enigma wants to do then it gets uh put a plus one counter on each aura with ward you control um, and then you get to transcend. So spectral shields, do they have ward? I can't yeah, remember. They have ward they one. They've been like yeah. fun- not functional errated, but like they've been errated to have ward one. Yeah. Oh, put a plus so on each aura. Every yes. single one. Oh my yeah. God. Every single one. Aura <laughs> illusionist is coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Holy hell. Well, it's a good thing you don't have Luminaris to like but I bet you're going to have something similar to Luminaris that's going to let you attack with these little little chunguses. I reckon they'll be... Do you reckon they'll be like a card that allows you to do it rather than have a start in play, stays in play weapon? Maybe there's like some sort of card which you could say you could attack with all of your things just one time rather than have it as a weapon? That yeah, cool. there might be like a... Um, there might be like just... I don't know. if it If it's just a regular card then you're sort of limited by only being able to play three of them. Yeah. So you could only like have three attacks mm. um, unless it's... you were able to recycle them somehow. Or if it was on like a non weapon equipment. So like, instead of like, let's say it's on your helmet. So you could like, <laughs> you uh, can't also use the good helmets that exist. Um, yeah. I mean, oh, that's, getting, that's getting into pure speculation town. We're, we're, we're yeah, saying that, that but it's but... it's probably just going to be like the blue storm of Sandakai, right? It's just going to mm-hmm. be the blue Dromai thing. It's going to be like if you've played a blue yeah. card this turn, all of your the auras oh, get please, go again. Please no, please no. 
which everybody loves and has never been an issue. So <laughs> absolutely not. No, I, I bet it's, it's going to be something similar to that. I think because I think so too. Because they, the it, it, the, she really seems like the kind of illusionist that wants you to make like a bunch of stuff, and they're mm-hmm. going to give you some way to give all that crap go again. Like for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. But um. But yeah, pretty cool. Like how it, obviously all these cards, as you mentioned, they do sort of synergize with the hero and sort of enable the hero or what they want to do. Um, despite them not being specializations or tied to that specific hero, they all care about that. They all care about what the mm-hmm. hero wants to do. Um, so, um, so yeah, pretty cool cards. Still don't know what transcend means. Um, again, as we discussed earlier, it could be just something which enables other cards, but um, there might also be tokens or pieces of equipment or sort of draft things that start in play that say when you transcend you do this or whatever i don't think it's going to be as op as like turning into a demi hero i don't think that's going to be the case it could just be a could just be something that enables other cards as we said well but, um, if we want to move on to some other cards we actually have some cards that care yes. about transcend so we can that's where, that's where i was trying to go with it yeah <laughs> um so yeah who wants to start with one of these other cards then um uh, let's go back to me how about yeah go back to you <laughs> choose a um, pick. well choose i'm pick. going to choose the ninja one as well just to keep things consistent you guys don't yep. have to do this but i just also want to talk about it again because uh next up we have another promo so this could be anything but it interacts with uh this is a cycle that interacts with transcending it reads like uh, a rare wind... to me for some reason I think it. I think it's a rare. Yeah, it feels like a rare. But we have Wind Chakra, uh, and the Chakra cycle cares about transcending. This one reads: uh, It's a Mystic Ninja action. Comes in red. Costs zero. Uh, it has go again. And the next Crouching Tiger you play this turn gets plus three. However, if you've transcended this turn, it instead gets plus five. Pretty good. Um, uh. So pretty good. This to me then also uh, implies that transcending is going to be something that you get to do relatively frequently. Because mm-hmm. if it was something that was more difficult, I feel like you'd get more of a bonus. <laughs> like if it's less it, likely that you're going to be able to transcend, I feel like you'd get like, oh, also your Crouching Tigers get plus one attack this turn or something. Um, instead of just another plus two buff. Um, to me, that's, that's kind of what that implies. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking that maybe in Limited or Draft, there's like something out in play which allows you to transcend. Mm-hmm. Um, just so it can turn on your other things, but um, but yeah, I, uh, I think I think this is I think this is awesome. It reminds me of the 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 multiple cards we've seen in other in other sets and stuff, which is the zero for plus three, but there's a condition. If you if yeah. you satisfy the condition, you get maybe an extra bonus, or it's just above rate in those scenarios. And this is exactly what this is. Uh, it's just a it's not a reaction, so it's not. I don't think it's as good as like things like the. Um, the cut to the chases, they're the zero to threes, aren't zero for threes, mm-hmm. aren't they? Um, cut to the chase, zero for three. Uh, but you have to play this. It's an upfront thing, so it's te- it's televised. That, that this is like a, it's basically a nim- nimbleism that can get bigger, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But, um, um, yeah, for sick. And it blocks for three as well, which is good. Don't know whether it's going to be blue, yellow, and blue and yellow as well. This seems like a red only version. Mm-hmm. Um, can... and the other ones are red only as well but i could see it in other pitch, other pitch yeah i can well. i can see these other pitches i also like like uh what what as said a little bit about like uh some item or something that starts in play that allows you to transcend i would bet mm-hmm. money this is something they always seem to do and they always slap it on hats i would bet money that there's going to be a common hat or at least there may be a common cycle of hats maybe one for each class that it's like sacrifice hat do something transcend. and transcend. Yeah, I bet. I bet mm-hmm. there's like, good chance. Some, yeah. something like that. Yeah, like a common cycle of draft limited equipment that allow you to do that thing, but it's yep. not OP in constructed situation. Yeah, um, that's what I'm feeling. Yeah, you know, they had it for like light and shadow and monarch. Mm-hmm. Like I, I've, I have a feeling they're gonna do that for this too. Um, yeah, it's interest. It's interesting as well because there's. Um, the other cards like the sacred the sacred art cards they're instants so there, there could also be well we have seen them already like big blue big blue oh no, they, they, they don't care about transcending but the what i was getting at is that the transcending stuff can also matter on your opponent's turn as well potentially if you've transcended during your opponent's turn you could also do something as well it's not just your turn 
Um, so there, there, there could be a reason for transcending on your opponent's turn as well, perhaps, which we haven't seen yet. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, oh no, yeah. So there, there, there is one which I'll, I'll just go. I'll just go into that now because um, I'll just skip out because that's what I was getting at. Moon Chakra, which is the Mystic Illusionist one. The next time you'll be dealt damage this turn, prevent three of that damage. If you've transcended this turn, it said prevent five. So if you transcend on your opponent's turn, you've got a zero for prevent five, which is just pretty good. Kano mains uh, in shambles. See you later, Kano. <laughs> yeah. This is this is yeah, better for, for preventing those combos in Oasis for Spikes. It's extra obviously extra extra one and it obviously costs nothing to play. Zero, well. yeah. You might have to somehow transcend to get the full value out of it, but there's going to be ways to do that. Um, so yeah, another another pretty sick tool that Illusionist is going to have access to. Um, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be hard for a wizard to get through Illusionist. I mean, I've, I've already heard that Prism um, Awakener of Soul is a hard matchup for Kano because of the fact that um, you know Prism has the wards out, the angels that soak up all the damage. So uh, this similar is going to be similar to that, where you're going to be able to prevent damage. Um, so. I don't like prevent damage. It's uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's a, I think it goes around the the defense the defense sort of mechanics of fab. I don't don't particularly like it, but I know there's a space for it. Um, yeah, that's my view on it. But pretty cool nonetheless. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling we'll see yeah. more of prevent mechanic stuff unless they uh, prevent damage stuff as a mechanic unless they come up with some new mechanic because. If they're gonna make like an all arcane set, they gotta have some way to prevent that crap. So, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. There was there was something else. There was something in um in uprising, wasn't there? Like a it's not it's not spell void, but something else. There was like another prevention thing. Oh, uh, uh, quell, quell. There's quell, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, which was was that that was basically you was that you pay you pay a certain amount and then you prevent that much damage is that right? It's like for the prevent remainder zone. of the from the remainder of the yeah. turn, if you would take one source, if if it's like quell one, if you would take one point of damage, you could pay one and prevent one of that damage. But you can only ever yeah. prevent the quell number, right? So you could never prevent more than one on a, any given source of damage. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's only for the one turn as well. Yeah. Because yeah, then they but... then they blow up. Yeah, it was oh, kind of yeah. like a, for all intents and purposes, kind of like a bad arcane barrier. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, yeah. So it could it could stop it could stop both forms of damage, but it was just worse. It's just more inefficient, basically. Um. But um. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's moon chakra again. So yeah, you you get tr if you transcended on your opponent's turn, on the defense. There's going to be cards that allow you to get extra value like this, for instance. Uh, there's going to be other things as well. Uh, but what's the last one, Kel? The last one is Tide Chakra. Yes. So Tide Chakra, once again, it has this uh, L5R border. It is a, a Mystic Assassin attack reaction. So this is an attack reaction. It, it costs one, blocks three. Uh, this is really simple. It, it's actually very close to the ninja one. It's a target assassin or mystic attack action card gets plus three attack. If you've transcended this turn, it gets plus five instead. So it's just a raw one for plus three or one for plus five. Um, both of the, the assassin one and the ninja one remind me of WTR cards. Whereas like the first one was like, it's basically like nimbleism plus, And then this one's kind of like razor reflex plus, except without the most important part of razor reflex, which is the go again. Um, yeah. So, yeah, blocks three, which is which is kind of cool. Uh, the plus five is is also kind of cool. The fact that it can do either assassin or mystic attacks is is pretty sweet. Um, well, I should rather say attack action cards, not attacks. Um, so that that is relevant. You cannot pump your daggers or something with this, but still, so still, still pretty cool. Yeah, it seems seems like a limited card to me, unless you really need to push like the big, big number through. Yeah. What do we think about um <clears throat> do we still think the other heroes of the set will be just the the uh, non-talented versions? Do you reckon that's oh. going to be the same? There are no more heroes in the set. There's only 3. Mm. Oh, is there? Yeah, it was confirmed at uh it was confirmed at uh PT L, uh, Pro Tour LA oh, that uh that then. I thought there was still more. <laughs> yeah, in in the video that I made talking about like all the stuff um 
I was like, oh, there's going to be three more heroes. But no, it was confirmed at the player reception that these are the only three heroes in the set. Yeah. I see. Okay. That makes sense. Well, with the, the great like thing about that. Yeah. Go, did, Sorry, go Josh, ahead. You, I was going to say, would you, if you're going to say something else, you go ahead, but I can save my thing afterwards. Oh, yeah. No, I was just going to say, I kind of like that because then it gives them more space in the set to actually like flesh out this idea instead of having to just put x amount of cards for you know like either like a limited or just as like kind of side support for existing like non-talented heroes or different talented it lets them just have more opportunities to actually put cards in the set that are mystic or care about mystic um so yeah. i like that they're sort of fleshing it out a little bit more up front yeah just going full on on full on in on, you know, on the new on the new cool stuff rather than trying mm -hmm. to support the other thing the other generic stuff um but what what I was going to say was, but I've just looked at the card and I realized that you can't do this is that you can't split these up. So, so you, you couldn't, you couldn't take tide chakra and stay open to then play a mystic ninja. You would, you mm -hmm. would not, you're not allowed to do that because obviously it's not mystic slash assassin. It's mystic assassin only. You can only use yeah. this in. Um, so it's not like you could take this and be like, oh, okay, yes, I can use this with Zen target assassin or mystic attack action card gets plus three um mm -hmm. so you can't do that which is which is a shame but yeah maybe they're again because these cards are pigeonholed into the into the mystic ninja the mystic assassin mystic illusionist no, nothing else can get those maybe that's a good thing i don't know but we're still I mean, yet to see all the cards yeah the opposite might be true though like they're they're, they're, they're likely gonna yeah. print like a bunch of just generic ninja cards or I mean, ninja cards wouldn't keep you open. The mystic cards, I suppose, would. Like, uh, we haven't seen any just straight up mystic cards yet. I don't think, right? Um, we saw two last week. Um, so uh, oh, we did. Were, okay. Yeah, big blue sky and then bright oh, blue yonder. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Okay, I remember those. Yeah. Yeah. So a D react and an attack react. Uh, we've seen which are mystic. Um, so you could still, you could take, you could. That's what I mean. You can't. Uh, I guess. There's there's no probably no such thing as staying open to a certain degree because you can always choose a mystic card. There's hey, always going to be mystic cards in the set, in the booster packs. There's nothing yeah, else. Mystic cards would be like staying open, like just a gener like a regular mystic card, right? Yeah, like, yeah. That that would yeah. be like staying open, but we have to see if they print mystic cards good enough that uh, you know let you stay open and still pick a good card in, in draft. Do we know the um? Do we know if there's any if do we know the the makeup of the cards yet? We don't know if there's any generics or anything because it just doesn't sound. This doesn't for, seem like a set which have generics in it. <laughs> for some reason, I thought there's gonna be none, but that I might have just that might just be a rumor. I don't know. Um, there there is the product page, but it doesn't go into it. But I I don't oh, think yeah, there'll be very many generics. If there are some in the set, I don't think there'll be very many. Um. Mm -hmm yeah yeah but we still know we're going to get the expansion slot as well so obviously there's going to be that of course yeah. like there always is going forward um but um but yeah i'm really really liking the look of these of these cards i'm really looking forward to seeing the full set realized obviously this is just literally what we've been given to talk about this week because the mothership deemed it necessary to release it so you know this is just what we're going off of right now these six new cards mm -hmm. <laughs> that is it um but um but yeah, I'm absolutely loving loving the look of the look of these cards as well, and um, I'm sure this is going to be a lot of people's new favorite flesh and blood set. Yeah, it's gonna out. gonna be up there for me. I can already tell. Like uh, for heavy hitters, I bought literally one one case of heavy hitters. Uh, for this set, I'm gonna be buying a lot more than one case. I can tell you that yeah. much. Um, yeah, I can yeah. tell you that I'm gonna be buying a lot more than one case of Japanese version of this set. Like. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I also heard that, and this is not a rumor, um, that there's going to be two exclusive cards to the Japanese print version of this, of the of uh, Part the Misfile. There's going to wow. be two, I think they're going to be like alt art cards or something like that. Um, so, that'd yeah. be good. Yeah, yeah, I think there was, I forget what the, the wording of it was, but they said like the Japanese product is going to have... Yeah, the Japanese language product has one additional legendary and Marvel. Yeah. So. Yep. I imagine they're going to be like, 
I imagine they're going to be like alternate art, like anime style stuff. That That's what I'm envisioning. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. And you know, those are going to be worth like a fortune as well. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. They're probably going to be we... pretty, uh, pretty low pull rates. <laughs> I wonder if yeah. the Oh, you know what? I wonder if it's the same card. I wonder if it's like a legendary and then like the Marvel version of that legendary. Um, that would be sick. Hmm. That'd be intriguing. Because hmm. we can't, we, we that's what we we said in a previous podcast of the Japanese product. We were like, oh, I wonder if they're going to do alternate arts. And mm -hmm. lo and behold, they probably are by the looks of it. Um, because that'll be yeah, that, that that just adds more spice to the the you know the the Japanese products, the first of its kind, just adds more spice. Similar to how the Black Label history pack stuff added the Marvel heroes. You know, it still encouraged other people to buy them. If the, if you were in a foreign country, you'd be like, yeah, I'm still going to pick up a pack of these, even though they're not my language, because there might be a cool Marvel in there that I can get. Um, yeah. So, yeah, just encouraging all nationalities to buy other nationality products is good stuff all around. Mm -hmm. um, or just incentivizing but, um, all the weebs to spend all of their weeb money. Pretty much, yeah, just extract that cash out of their wallets. Yep. Um, Direct uh, vacuum to their to their wallet. Pretty much, yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, very, very much looking forward to that. It's going to be you know, over the next few uh, few weeks or so, and leading up to when the actual spoiler season happens, there's probably going to be more news, more cards, just filtering through that are going to give us more and more stuff to, to speak about and analyze as, as time goes on. Um, but there's only so far, there's only so far you can really go with you know this this much information, and that's another thing as well. I want to point out for people saying um, haven't seen it so so much yet, but when people say, oh, this new hero's garbage or this this card is rubbish, you know, you haven't seen the set yet. Don't make those judgments. You haven't seen the I, new set realized. <laughs> I, I do think it's kind of funny. I have seen videos of like pro players are like, is X hero good, like new or something? And I'm like, how do you know if they're good or how not? You know? We literally yeah. haven't seen like any of their toolkit other than like the generic yeah. stealth cards that already exist. Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. And it, th 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 there are arguments to be had where you know people that are in the game that entrenched into the game, they might have a an idea of what some cards might do in the set. You know that they can test without even needing to know the cards that are coming out because they 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 just potentially know that information already. But at the end of the day, you don't know the information. Unfortunately, you could test. Mm. You can test. You can test a test a deck with. You could test a deck. You could test a new deck or a or a Enigma deck with these three cards and what other cards could you use? Like the maybe the Dynasty ones that care about spectral shields, uh, and that's pretty much the extent of what you're going to be able to realize a deck does right now. Like very likely, each of the three heroes will get like a must-have legendary that alters how they play in some way. Yeah, like definitely without without even that. Like you're not even playing like their normal play patterns and stuff. I don't know. It's it's sweet, yo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So just just wait and uh, you know, appreciate the cards as they come out, but yeah, just wait and see what happens. Um I can't wait to see it, not to be fair. But there's a there's a few other cards as well that came out and a little bit of controversy surrounding this as well. Uh and that was obviously we spoke about it last week and that was the KO Armory deck. Um Yes. So First of all, Kel, what's your thoughts on the KO Armory decks? Obviously, you weren't here last week. What do you think is the decision as to using that hero? Uh, weird. I was like, kind of, when I saw that it was KO, I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> really KO? Like, that's fine. I think, I think KO is like, cool. KO is obviously very, very strong. Four, mm -hmm. out of the, four out of the eight in the top eight of the Pro Tour were KO. So KO is... Four out of eight top eight pro tour good, which is very, very good. Um, yeah. I, I made like a little another little flippant tweet. I was like, um, remember when uh everyone was saying that flesh and blood is powering down new heroes? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Um yeah, because like uh definitely not powered down. Four out of eight top eight pro tour right out the gates. Not, I would not call that power down. It's not necessarily busted or anything. There's obviously a lot of counterplay, but uh, still very, very strong. And to have KO as the armory deck felt weird to me off the back of heavy hitters. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was a, maybe I was just like hoping for like something new or something like um, 
different classic yeah like ira or something but like just to yeah. have the same exact hero that we literally had in heavy hitters was like okay sure i guess maybe they just want to like supplement the heavy hitters release um and to get people into like oh if you bought uh this armory deck then then you can go buy heavy hitters maybe it's kind of like a you know more of a businessy kind of decision right um mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so sort of tying it in, tying it into the to the latest release, which obviously sells more products because you can just buy the deck and then be like, yeah. "Oh, how do I upgrade this?" Oh, you buy you buy heavy hitters, yeah, um, and you go buy some more boxes off the shelf to try and upgrade the deck. Um, but it also could be, as we were discussing last week, a proactive decision to release Ko. They, they they maybe they've got a few of these decks already built and lined up, ready for release, but they've seen the meta and were like, "Right, okay." There's four KOs in the top eight. The optics, um, you know, make sense that KO is good. What what might new players want to try and get to get into this game to stand a fighting chance at their armory? We'll just use KO because obviously he's mathematically one of the best decks out there in regards to sheer value. Uh, and this is this is also another talking point which I I reposted um, not only to remind myself about it when this podcast came up, but also because it was a good point. And that was from Yuki Lee Bender recently. Uh, and she said, I'm not in love with how the heavy meta is largely defined by decks with a huge fridge. So a lot of the heroes out there at the moment, Warrior, KO, Victor, have massive armor suites. Um, and uh, she said, this weakens on hits and promotes raw vanilla numbers. Um, yeah. So r raw vanilla numbers is what it is right now. Uh, you've got Hatchet Story, which is just a grindy, efficient axe deck you've got ko which is again just big vanilla numbers which is probably why they wanted to release it as a armory deck and then you've got victor as well just stuff that blocks really well and has a huge fridge um and a lot of it is based around just how many numbers you can get and how good your math skills are rather than anything else um so i thought that was a really really good conversation that she brought up on twitter recently um and uh, yeah, so I also wanted to mention that as well. What, what, what's what's your guys' thoughts on on that? I mean, I agree, and uh, also I think it's kind of boring. That's just yeah, just raw numbers winning most of the time, nothing else. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's why. Like, even though I think Guardian can be fun every now and then, it's like definitely not my favorite class because it's just like you know, big numbers. Sometimes you can have cool effects, and sometimes they're like degenerate as hell when you're playing like starvo um yeah but if it was just like big numbers big number smashy it's like sure i guess yeah yeah i i too like playing crater hoof behemoth you know um but at least that card ends the game on the spot um yeah 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 i mean i think this is this is like you know one of the other things she mentioned is uh i feel like more armor hate could help the game as well because a lot of these decks that are current are leaning on are leaning on their their armor which is another which is another another big point um so maybe there there needs to be a shift in how armor works because a lot of these heroes that obviously are doing well warrior has a replenishable armor on board with valiant dynamos you can just continuously block one all the time even the brutes now have a huge suite um when on their art, they're dressed in nothing but rags. Um, hey, <laughs> that is a very protective loincloth, my dude. Like, I love how the scabskin yeah. leathers has freaking battle worn. Like, like exactly. lore wise, those yes. are like sturdier than most armor in flesh and blood. Like most like plate armor, these like little stanky butt flaps, stanky you know? Stanky scabskins is like better than, well, if not, yeah, probably better than civic steps because civic steps gives your opponent a quicken. Like, how does that work? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But um, yeah, I just thought, I thought that was a just thought that was a decent point. Before we get onto these uh, these other cards that came in the KO deck, um, it, I just thought that was a very very interesting discussion point that she brought brought up recently. Um, and speaking of fridges and equipment, we have a savage sash, which you know what is the definition of a sash? Let me just have a look. Definition of a sash. Because this apparently blocks for two in flesh and blood world. The sash this is, is like, like it's like a it's like a long strip of cloth, right? That you just like tie around. Right. Yeah. 
Exactly, yeah. A sash is a long strip or loop of cloth worn over the shoulder or around the waist, especially as a part of uniform or official dress. A sash. Uh, and yet this blocks for two, which is the same as what a civic steps would. Um, so uh, this is like the, the magic equivalent of like, what's a tutu? Is it a bear? Yeah, it, bear. Hey, it's just bear. really, really strong piece of cloth really and, strong and they sash. and they hit you exactly where the sash is on your on your waist right that's what it's it is, it's yeah. like the traditional traditional like fantasy like boob bikini armor it like has really high yes. high armor class but actually protects like you know in real life probably probably not not much at all nothing yeah yeah um but yeah, so uh, aside from that, uh, Savage Sash. This is the one of the one of the cards that comes in the KO deck. We've seen two cards that are unique. There could be more, um, but um, these are ones we've seen so far. Uh, so Savage Sash. Uh, have you got Have you got this in front of you, Bill? Do you want to read this one out? Uh, this I don't have it immediately in front of me, but I do remember what it is. Uh, so Savage oh. Sash is a majestic uh, brute right. chest piece. Uh, it has uh, not battle worn. It has. Uh, oh, he's on, getting there. Find it's it. like a, I, a I, quiz it quiz live. I'm pretty sure. Ah, I found I'm, it. I'm pretty sure it's it. temp temper. I think. Yeah. So That's it's fine. a majestic brute chest piece. Uh, it has temper two, uh, and then action destroy this attack action cards with six or more attack cost you one resource less to play this turn. Go again. Uh, mm. So the immediate reaction that I had and also saw when this was released is, ah, this is why they banned Berserk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, that's right. Being able to draw more six attacks every time you, uh, whatever it is, banish a six attack. Um, whenever you discard a six attack, I think. Yeah, you discard right. it, banish, yes. and then reveal the top. If it's a six, it goes into your hand, and that's just for the remainder of the turn. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, kind of gross. <laughs> so... I I'm still think, think, I think of... this chest piece is also pretty gross, to be fair. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I have thoughts on it, but uh, go ahead, As. It sounds sound like you had something to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just, just going to try and figure out how Berserk, why they banned Berserk because of this. Can somebody explain why? Well, but maybe, it's so, not, maybe it's not specifically because of Savage Sash, but well, it's maybe like, a part of it. Yeah. You could end up drawing like a ton of cards. Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. end up drawing a lot of cards yeah. and this uh, makes all of them cost one less. And if you have a lot of go again with like quicken and all this kind of stuff, then it could just lead to like a really big explosive turn essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one of the reasons why they said they, 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 uh, I was gonna say banished why they, where they banned berserk is they're like, it's not great now, but it sometimes could potentially lead to like these pop off situations and, Everyone, when when this card was revealed, everyone was like, "Oh yeah, you you know, like with a card like this, like I I, I understand." Um, it's just one yeah. of those cards that like limits design space. Berserk is mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. I I thought the card was cool. I like jank stuff like that, but I I get it. Um, yeah, I think they're uh, just they're just a little bit scared of what it can do. <laughs> yeah, which I think yeah. is reasonable. Um, cool. What's but your like, thoughts on Savage Dash then? Go back to this. So, I I actually really like it. So I'm I'm on I'm on the I'm on the side that I think it's really good. Um, in fact, I think it's extra good that it's in the deck. Um, because yeah. it literally gives someone a brand new player a powerful alternative to t Spring Tunic in a starter deck, mm -hmm. and I think that is yeah. really really good. Um, if if like the intent is to give a new player, a playable, good deck out of the box. You have to print good cards. You can't just print a bunch of ass uh, and then be like, here's your ass deck. Go go win an armory. Um, you actually have to print good cards. And so, like, this is yeah. a good card. And uh, it's a equipment. You only need one. So you don't need to buy, like, four or three decks or whatever. You just buy the one deck and you got, you got the one card. And, uh, yeah, I like it. Thumbs up for me. They literally said they're yeah. going to be like, oh, we're going to make these decks good and we're going to put like new cards in them. And then they did that. <laughs> That's exactly mm -hmm. what they're doing. Um, I'll be interested to see, like, I'm not a brute aficionado or anything and I can't really evaluate these cards on a ridiculous level. But, you know, is this is this something that you'd want to 
if you're an established brute player already, whether that's Reinar, Leviah, or Ko, which are the brutes that you can play at the moment in CC at least, do you want to run this over anything else? You know, leave a comment in the section below as to whether you'd want to use this instead of Tunic, or whether you'd want to use this in certain matchups instead of Tunic. Let us know because I I can't I can't really evaluate it, but can My... you guys? Can you what what's your thought? Do you reckon you would want to use this over something else or what? My instinct is that in shorter games, um, or games that you need more block, you run this. And then if game if in matchups that you intend on going to like second and third cycle, then tunic becomes better and you get more value out of tunic. That's kind of like my initial thoughts on it. Yeah. Brute brute fans let us know down below but that's kind of what it reads to me because you can you can block this once and then and then crack it this is, this is basically like brute courage a blade hold right like mm -hmm. that, that's, that's what this is you st has the same like stat lines cost reduction uh it's just like a different cost reduction on different things um so like i yeah. evaluate this card similar to courage a blade hold which is a pretty good card right sometimes you run courage a blade hold over a tunic sometimes well you actually run the new the new one a lot um Brains, yeah. Oh god, yeah. It's a great card. But yeah, this is like this yeah. is like a brute courage blade hold. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think, Bill? I think that there wasn't really a brute chest piece before. Like there kind of was in that you had. Um, yeah. I guess uh, bark, bark bone is like cross strap. Like yeah, bark, bark bone bone's strapping bark was like. Bone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was the one um, because. Um, uh, not Skullbone cross wrap, but Heart and Cross Strap was uh, was banned. Yes. Um, because yeah. I card BDSM is... chest that one. Yes, yeah, that yeah, card yeah. is really good with something like Swing Big. Um, and I think yep. that this is also really good with Swing Big and also a bunch of other cards. Um, this turns yeah. Swing Big into a one for eight. Pretty good, yeah. yeah. Um, which is pretty crazy. Um, it like leaves you open to being able to, if you wanted to do this, I don't know if you necessarily need to or not, but uh, I'm, I'm just going to put this out there into the world. Uh, you can swing big uh, and pummel off of a single blue with this. Yeah. Or <laughs> oh, yeah. so um, I was just thinking like you could double swing big if you had like a quicken token. So you can just keep like, mm -hmm. uh, you can keep like uh, a yellow and then two, two yeah, swing bigs and like swing big, swing big. Oh uh, yeah. That's all. That's horrible. Yeah wouldn't be uh wouldn't be really stoked to see that on the other side of the table myself um, yeah and the, com funny. combine that with like uh you know blood rush bellows and then you're getting just absolutely crushed for 20 plus damage and, and you know yeah. <laughs> yeah so i think that this even again it being just a temper two as well is already huge mm. uh, like a huge increase over um bark bone strappings um or like tunic if you were playing tunic in in brute previously then i think this kind of does what like it, it's not as many um you could potentially get like resource on two separate turns with tunic but i think what this represents if you're able to chain one or two attacks together i think that this is infinitely more valuable you have like such an impactful single turn again being able to go like if you have a quicken token into two swing bigs without literally anything else that's 16 damage <laughs> yeah um off of a yellow <laughs> so uh yeah i think this card is really good it, it's, it's really good strong. and it's also just like i don't want to say like it, i guess it could be considered a strict upgrade for a hero that literally just got four out of eight in the top eight i'm gonna keep saying that so like mm. ko was already yeah. good ko is now like slightly better um yeah i think plus getting where, a shot in the arm in the remaining arm with this yeah, yeah. so and that's, uh, and that's where the con that's where the controversy was going recently is that mm -hmm. um you know these are only available in these decks currently is this yeah. is this another situation where we had the glistening steel blade printed in classic battles and that you can only get it through the purchase of that product so you can't get it in boosters or is this uh savage sash going to be in the expansion slot in the next set you know, etc. Um, how how do they combat the fact that they've only printed it in this set, and yet it does seem to be very useful, or at least something sideboardable in a constructed in a constructed sense, where you might want to use it if you need more block. Because ultimately, yes, it blocks for three over the course of a game, but it still blocks for two. And then if you need to use the ability, you can. So it also has that 
that um, that utility as well. Whereas, as we were discussing just now with heart and cross strap, this is basically a better heart and cross strap because heart and cross strap just says destroy it. You can play a swing big for free. This blocks for two and then says you can play a swing big for one, um, etc. Um, so there's, but then again, that's also an argument an argument for doing this because every piece of equipment can act in a different way as well. Mm -hmm. But then going back round to why that's also a negative, this is obviously a perpetual cycle here, is you might want to get you might want to get your hand on that deck just to get that card. So it's just like a it's hard to really form an opinion so, on because there's pros and cons for both. I think it's like a easy in my opinion, the way I see it, I think it's definitely an easy pro. Because like I said, it gives players good cards in a pre-constructed deck. Um, in a product that was promised to be a good deck. Like, that's literally what the, the whole point of this product is. It's not, this is not a Blitz deck. This is not your, wel your Welcome deck or Classic Battle. This is literally a product that's, like, armory ready. It's supposed to be good. Um, so, like, obviously they, they need to print good cards to be good. The fact that it's exclusive right now, you know what? I can see that being an issue only if the uh, supply is, like, heavily throttled but i did see something interesting that an lgs pointed out that the the cases of these decks are 12 decks you cannot as a store you cannot buy one deck you literally have to buy them in quantities of 12 um which is a lot so like mm. i have a feeling that stores might be like flooded with this like i i, I don't think there's going to be a scarcity issue um I mean, who knows? There, there might be, uh, like, uh, at, at like the manufacturing level, but it really feels like yeah. stores might have the opposite problem. They might, if they buy like, you know, three cases, thirty six decks. Like, do you know thirty six people in your local meta who want a KO deck? Like, <laughs> this this is not a yeah. generic card, too. Like, it's just it's only if you play brute. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I don't play brute, so I don't really. I'm, I'm gonna buy the deck anyway to have fun with. But like, if I wasn't gonna be doing that, I would just skip this product. It's, I don't really need it. Um, so I, I yeah. don't think it'll be a big deal. And the fact that it sounds like there's gonna be a lot, it might not even be very valuable because like you, yeah, every that's, you, you only need one. That's kind of the nice thing. Like it, the this sort of inherently solves the problem that Glistening Steel Blade has where uh, you need to buy three of the decks in order yes. to have a playset. That's important. Equipment, you only yeah. need the one. So yeah. like if there are, say say there's another Majestic in the set that is really good it and people be. want um, want a playset of, you know, you need to buy three decks to have three of them. Um, it's still possible that that could be a thing, but then that means that you buy three of these decks, you have three of these chest pieces, you only need one, so you sell the two of them. Um, and if, you know, everybody does that, then the market just kind of becomes f not necessarily flooded, but there's a, a decent amount of supply for them. So, yeah, I think that's kind of nice, at least for this card and not this hypothetical other three of that you're potentially looking at. Um, yeah. it will make, the, it will drive the price down the, them just being more available so, than, uh, than steel blades were. Yes. So I, I have an example. Um, I have a bunch of product on my uh, table here that I'm going to be making videos of, of a game called We Cross. And I have a starter deck here. This is like a dual deck kind of thing. And this deck, or this, this product, is, is probably one of the best starter deck products I've ever seen in any trading card game. And it did exactly what Bill said. This this literally printed the equivalent of E-Strike and CNC in this starter deck product. These, these cards were like $30, $40, and they printed them here in the starter deck product. Uh, namely, it was a, a card called Exia, uh, and they also printed like multiple copies of, of, of other cards. But like Exia mm -hmm. was like a $30, $40 card. Still still pretty valuable card, but they this starter deck comes with one, only one, only, only comes with one. But what it helped do, what, what it helped was that it like lowered the price of that card. And it also made a starter deck product that's like legitimately good. Like you can buy this mm -hmm. and it's like, fairly competitive two co fairly competitive decks um mm -hmm. this is like this is this is like a 30 or 40 dollar product by the way um and um yeah uh, generally speaking and the, the the point is is that that was also widely available you can buy that wherever um 
the the price the the product wasn't like throttled or anything like that so um yeah i think if they printed some like really other nice majestics even if they don't give you full play sets which i have a feeling they're not gonna um it should still be like pretty good like it should still help yeah. like lower prices um yeah and as, and as we as we sort of said earlier you know ko is one of those decks that's just the numbers are just good uh mm-hmm. overall um so you know you're going to get through the, you're going to get through games just because of the fact his numbers are consistent and obviously if you've got a, a piece of equipment in there which immediately is as good if not better in certain situations than tunic and it's available to you straight away we know how much armor makes a difference in high highly competitive games so having a majestic piece which not only gives you a lot of block but also gives you a lot of synergy is um is inherent to having a powerful deck um so it'd be interesting to see what the other pieces of armor are that you get as well yeah and i I think you need i think you need a full suite of armor to be competitive to be honest yeah i hope they i hope they put some good stuff in there and i i i i want to say um i think one of the reasons why also glistening steel blade was such a problem in uh classic battles is that for for some people that was literally the only reason to buy classic battles like yeah. because the two decks were like, let's be honest, not good. Um, they were yeah. literally like, you know, slightly above the Ira welcome decks, right? They had titanium bobble in them. Um, so like people did. didn't really have a reason to buy the, this $50 product other than the one card in it, which is why that one card spiked so much in price. Because if you're going to be spending 50 bucks just to crack this one specific card, then, you know, the price should be reflective of it. But I have a feeling this KO deck is going to be much, much, much more widely opened than classic battles, right? Because like anyone mm-hmm. who wants to like go and get into CC, and especially people who like are fans of Brute, are going to want to pick up one of these decks. And I can even see other Flesh and Blood players who like never played Brute before being like, sure, I'll, I'll buy the KO deck just to, to, to try it out and, and play with it. KO got four spots in the top eight at the Pro Tour. Let me see yeah. if I like it. So yeah, I think Heck obviously has legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think it'll be very opened. I think the product will be, unless it like absolutely sucks. I think it'll be uh, a pretty opened product. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. going forward into the future as well, as we know, they've got the expansion slot now. They've got these, you know, these these lots the, these slots that are going to have different products in. <laughs> They don't have they don't they, they have the means now to print cards that are needed. Um so uh so yeah, I don't think we're ever gonna have those sorts of issues. Oh, you know forward. what? Um the professor recently did a video on the modern event deck that we all talked about like a couple mm. weeks ago, and he broke mm-hmm. down the cost of what it what it used to be and then what the what the price of the cards are now. And it's like fascinating. The deck is worth about the same. Like, even though that, like, some cards are worth more now and some cards are worth less. Like, back then, Elspeth that came in the deck was, like, 20 bucks. Now it's, like, I don't know, $5 or something. But the the sword that came in, the Sword of Feast and Famine is now, like, a $40 card. But it's still, yeah. like, evened out, which is which is kind of funny. And, yeah. I mean, they, they did print expensive cards in that pre-constructed deck. Um, so, yeah, I think that was a, that's a pretty good, like, case study for a product kind of like this. Both of them intend, <coughs> pardon me, intending to be like a premium priced product to like, you know, kickstart your playing of a, like a competitive format. So yeah, yeah, I think it's fine, man. Like I, 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 I honestly, I'll even go one step further. If they, if they slap in like an e-strike or something, I think that'd also be fine. Like a hundred percent. Oh, easily. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This is coming from someone who owns like I, I literally have like twelve E strikes. I have like three alpha, three foil, and a bunch of other random ones. I, I don't care. They print the card and it's more accessible to other people. In fact, yeah. that'd be pretty cool. Like, yeah, well, I think it's I think it's just better to have the cards available than to gatekeep them for other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. So yeah, print the uh, print CNC, you cowards. Put, yeah. put it in the put it in the deck. That's what we need. We need a, need a t-shirt that says reprint CNC, you cowards, and just rip off Vince's reprint yeah. fetch lands, you cowards, but in a flesh and <laughs> blood form. Oh, it worked, though. <laughs> Fetches are like 15 bucks now, right? Or at least some of them are. Yeah. Um, That's an Arsenal step segue, if I ever saw one. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> I saw. Uh, I uh, obviously we we need to wrap this up fairly quickly because Bill's going to go watch Ale Storm tonight. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to use that as a uh, as a segue because uh, I saw a Magic card recently where it's just like Bill, you need to play this in an EDH game. Bristly Bill, come on now. Oh Bristly yeah, Bill. The, the character is is got cactuses round him. Bro, this is a Spike Feeders card. <laughs> we should be a Magic podcast. We because there's like there's Bristly Bill and then there. My name is Kellen. Everyone calls That's me right. Kel, but my actual name is Kellen. There's this dude named Kellen in Magic. There's, so there's a Magic yeah, set yeah. that there's a guy named Bill and Kellen in the same set. And I'm like, wait, where the hell is Az? Like, oh, yeah. then all three if of it, us are in, are in the in, cowboy set. In an alternative okay. universe, if the Living Legends podcast was was doing Magic, we would be losing our minds right now over the fact there's two thirds of it in in the set. What was I you going to say, Bill? Carry on. I was I was gonna say just that uh, not only is there Kellen, I had to look up to make sure that this card had been revealed already. It's been sitting on my desk for a while, but I have the like the wanted poster. Oh, Kellen that's cool! Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty sick. cool. Yeah, I, this card yeah. has already been revealed. It doesn't exist technically, but it's been revealed, so I can so, show it to you. <laughs> so wow. like before that's this, cool. I had, <laughs> pardon me, my my like vanity deck or whatever. I considered making Kell's fight fixer. Her name is like close to my name, but now the dude literally, mm-hmm. like I've already have a couple copies of Kellen because he's he was like in the Eldrain set, but um, I I I I gotta make the Kellen the kid deck at some point I think just absolutely yeah like it's pretty cool prof, prof his his real name is Brian and he has a Brian Stout Arm deck so like that that's yeah. his like you know him him in a deck so I'm like I gotta make the Kellen deck I do have yeah. a rogue typal deck. A rogue assassin deck, which is one of the reasons why I've been paying attention to this Outlaws of Thunder Junction, because I'm like, ooh, any good, any cool little mono black rogues? And the answer is uh, Tiny Bones. Um, Tiny Bones. Tiny Bones gets into my my rogue deck. It's actually like really good in my deck, too. So my rogue rogue deck is like pure jank, but it has like really, really powerful cards. Like it's got like the... (laughs) that gilded lotus in it so i could like mm-hmm. turb, i could turbo out my my jank commander um my commander is mari mari killing quill anyway <laughs> enough about yeah magic. I, 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 yeah i just thought i just thought i'd bring that up because i thought that was funny um <laughs> yeah and, uh, no, i gotta I, I gotta put that deck together so <laughs> that would be hilarious to see on a, on a, on a proper EDH All right. proper produced video. we gotta if, if i make the kellen deck and bill makes the bill deck as you need to make an as deck and we need to we need to play some commander. Maybe, maybe that'll be the game that we play if we ever go to to Bill's place. I need to, I, yeah, I need to try That'd and find. Sweet, actually, I, yeah, I need to try and find a. There's surely there's got to be a magic character that has as in the name somewhere. It's got to be. I know there's um, like there are cards that are Asma, as <laughs> Asmodeus, um, Asmodeus the Archfiend. <laughs> yeah, in the Baldur's Gate set. Is there any like? Um, or or are there any like errands or anything like? There's I'll a, find out. There's we'll, a Ron the Relentless. We'll... It kind of it kind of looks. You Ron can pull the Relentless. You yeah. can pull off an Ron the Relentless. Yeah. That's a home. That's a card from home, Homelands, by the way. Oh that's my a, god! It's a five-two a... haste from Homelands that has regenerate for like triple red. I think. Oh, oh yeah, that's oh. definitely me on a card. I have regenerate after a night out Duh, easily. The, the, he looks Certainly like you does. could you could cosplay a Ron the Relentless like. Yeah, for sure. He looks like uh, he looks like the dude from. Um, no, 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 no. He looks like the dude from uh, what's the band? Uh, Guns and Roses. He looks like Axl Rose. Like, oh, yeah. oh okay. No, there's also uh, is it Joven? I think Joven also jo- looks like Axl jo- Rose. No, but like no, a jo- different version jo- of Axl. Joven's Rose. the big guy. He's like this. <laughs> yeah, he kind of looks like an old Axl Rose. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, I'm see. gonna find out. I'm yeah. going to find out. I'm going to, I'm going to um, do, do, do my research and I'm going to come back to us next podcast and I'm going to tell okay. you what I found. I, yeah, hell yeah. Me. My, I have a very quick, uh, a very Go quick um, Arsenal step. It has nothing to do with card games. I just want to mention because is it an all time classic and I'm very much loving it, like playing through it again. Um, I just kind of randomly wanted to play. Well, not randomly. It's because of Akira Toriyama's passing. Uh, I was thinking a little bit more about uh, some of the stuff he's done. And one of the streamers I really like started playing Chrono Trigger. And I was like, man, I haven't played Chrono Trigger in like 15 years. It's one of my favorite games of all time. And 
I didn't realize there's a Steam version, so I I bought it a couple days ago. I've been oh, sick. Oh, really? I've been sick the last like week and some change, and so uh, Chrono Trigger has been lovely, absolutely lovely. The music is like some of the best of all time. That game is so good. It, 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 it's whole, it holds up so well too. Like the pixel art, just it just it's such a good game. Um, yeah, Chrono Trigger. That's what. Nice. That's my arsenal step. Play, play it if you haven't. It's a classic. Like it actually yeah, play, is, though. Play Chrono Trigger. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. But yeah, we already, we, all, to... we already know what Bill's arsenal step is. To a yeah. certain degree. <laughs> Gotta go to this concert. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. That's pretty much gonna yeah. pretty much gonna wrap it up for this week. Uh, Bill needs to go to uh, Elstorm which is a fair enough excuse to get the hell out of this podcast today. Um, but I hope you've all enjoyed yourself, uh, our, our mad ramblings of what these cards can do, even though there's six of them and we have no clue uh, what they could do yet um, in the grand scheme. Yeah, we of don't things. know what Chi is. We don't know what Transcending is. Hey, but we'll talk for an hour and a half about we'll, it either way. We will. Yes, we will. The Assassin one lets me steal stuff from your graveyard, which is, uh, I'm pretty cool with that. So, yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. But um, until next time, yeah, I've been Alice from Go Again Gaming, the host for today. You can find me on uh, on YouTube at Go Again Gaming, and then on Twitter at Go Again Gaming AZ, uh, and then I'll throw it over to uh, to Bill. I've been Bill from the Spike Feeders. Uh, you can find me on social media at Bill TSF. You can also find me on YouTube at the Spike Feeders Fab, where we do live edited gameplay content. Uh, if that's something that interests you, you should definitely go check it out. Uh, we are just in the process of releasing uh, our next gauntlet, which is Dash IO. Uh, so if you like that hero, then boy, do I have some content for you. Oh, <laughs> Dashio. 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 Yeah. It was me, Dashio. <laughs> it was me, Dashio. Um, but no, no, no. I'm, I'm actually Kel. Not, Dashio. I'm not Dashio. Yeah. Uh, and you can find me everywhere at Red, Red Zone Rogue. And um, you know, hit me up with your spiciest uh, Kel and the Kid EDH lists uh, on Twitter or on the comment section below. Oh yeah, let us know. Yeah, and let us know. If, let us know if there's a decent so, something I can be. Because there's a Bill, there's a Kellen. Is there a is there as or or an Aaron or whatever? Aaron That's... was a good shout. I just I just checked I just checked it out. It's quite similar to what I look like. But um, yeah, dude, like I'm like it actually it actually though. I yeah. played that card in middle school. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Hell so, yeah! Man. That's why you had it locked oh. and loaded. Yeah. Hell yeah, I'm, dude. It, hey, if it's like pre like 2019 magic there's a good chance i at least have some knowledge of it that i that was my game of choice for a very long time so yeah yeah hell yeah i'm sure a lot of people will agree um but uh until next time yes we'll see you sort of all over again uh where cal's gonna be the host next time so uh yeah yeah have a great night everybody bye-bye folks bye